All right, guys, thank you so much for uh, joining again. Um, getting, getting quite good at this now, but it still takes quite a few staff. So behind the camera, uh, we've got Sam, AJ, and Steve who are helping us. Uh, obviously, this is Adam. Hey, guys. Uh, and I'm Alex. Um, we're going to talk through our Fall Winter 23 collection today. Uh, it's a slightly smaller collection uh, that we've done in the last couple of years, um, but very, very strong, uh, concise and strong, trying to keep things a little bit simple um, in terms of kind of production. Uh, I think a lot of you who follow us on the forum will have heard uh, that we've got some production problems in Japan, like a lot of brands. Um, so trying not to overcomplicate things whilst all of that gets ironed out. So this collection, um, Fall Winter 23, we're calling Form and Function. Uh, I've got here one of the lookbooks that will be going out in uh, any Ironheart UK order from uh, next week onwards. Um, and yeah, we're going to get into it. Let's so, do it. Okay, so first things first, um, we've got two Type 3 jackets. Um, we have kind of pivoted towards mainly doing uh, modified Type 3 jackets recently. Modified is where we add the hand pockets, uh, the side hand pockets. In order to add those, uh, we add a little bit of extra length to the body, um, and, um, which is kind of preferred in a lot of senses, but we have been getting a lot of requests to do a slightly shorter body, more traditional type three. So uh, we've done that with these two. Uh, this fabric is a 12 ounce uh, whip cord. Um, it's quite a vintage fabric. It looks almost corduroy-like. Um, hopefully you can see that nice, um, nicely on the close-up Adam's giving you at the moment. Um, we're doing it in two colors, the khaki, which is at the front now, and the olive, uh, which is to my right, I guess, to your left. And now we're moving into uh, kind of military and heavy jackets. Uh, so first things first, we've got two, uh, two lined M65 jackets. Uh, these are both nylon lined. Um, it's a, re a removable uh, liner that we have in there, uh, buttons into the jacket uh, in several places, into the sleeves as well. Um, so this is uh, probably slightly warmer than the heavy sateen M65 jacket that has kind of become a core for winter piece for us. Um, although probably slightly less water resistant, um, definitely warmer. Um, and I guess a bit more versatile because you could take that liner out and wear it in the spring or in the, in the early fall as well. So this yeah, go for it. is the liner here. Obviously it's the way it sits in the sleeves, the sleeves are going to be slightly shorter, but that's that's what the liner looks like. Ow. Uh, next up, I'll grab quickly, <coughs> if you want to grab the next thing, yeah. uh, is just that heavy sateen M65. We're going to do this in uh, olive. Obviously, this is the olive, and also in black again. Uh, like I said, this has kind of been, become one of our core pieces, one, one of the things we're most known for in the fall winter. So we're going to keep doing that, as well as the new ones. Uh, next up, we've got uh, a rerun of the M51 uh, jacket which we did in olive um, for this year we're going to do it in black only this year uh, so just a new color to a jacket that we've that we've done before quite lightweight again it has that nylon uh, liner inside so it can be worn in the colder weather lining can be removed uh, for slightly milder days uh, water resistant the, uh, the kind of fishtail pops up on the inside if you don't like the long tails uh, lots of different uh, areas that you can adjust the fit with uh, drawstrings and, and toggles. Uh, so we've got a new pattern uh, for this season, uh, which we're really excited about. This is an A2 deck jacket. Um, the one that Adam's got here is a, a cotton serge uh, outer, and then it's lined with wool. Um, really, really nice kind of mix up to the N1 that we've been doing for the last few years and continue to do. Yeah, so super. Try that one on for the fit. Yeah, super excited about this one. So it's an 11 ounce uh, cotton serge. The wool lining actually goes all the way down to the sleeves as well for added warmth. Um, but it doesn't. That doesn't make it difficult to put on. It's still really smooth to to try on. Um, yeah, this got a lot of love when we were showing it to the retailers, and and a lot of love in the office here so far. Got some cinches on the side to adjust the fit if you like. Uh, slightly contrasting, which is traditional. Um, any pockets? No pockets. This is, uh, yeah. I think the thing that I'm most excited about jacket-wise is the, this A2. First time we've done it, uh, same pattern. This is in, uh, in whipcord, in our 12 ounce, uh, 11 ounce, 12 ounce? 12 ounce, yeah. 12 ounce olive whipcord. Uh, again, contrast, um, cinches at the waist. Uh, otherwise, same pattern. Yeah, AJ? Is this coming in any other colors or just olive? Just this color. Uh, sorry, the question was, is this coming in any other colors? No. The A2 is coming in the two 
colors that we showed you, the olive surge and the olive whipcord. You yes. probably noticed that the surge is, is a slightly lighter. Yeah, do you want to do a side by olive. side? Uh, and Steve, you had a question? Yes, did you say there was no inside pockets? There are no inside, inside chest pockets on either of the A2 jackets, no. So this, this is the surge, this is the whipcord. So hopefully you can see a slight difference in, um, in color tone there. Moving on to the more traditional Ironheart deck jacket, this is obviously an N1. Uh, I think most people now watching this will be familiar with our N1 jacket. Uh, I'll run through the details really quickly uh, for those of you who aren't. So uh, D pockets, although this isn't stitched, this is the waxed, uh, sorry, the oiled version. We'll show you the non-oiled version shortly. Uh, heavy whipcord outer. Uh, we've got an interlining in between that whipcord and the alpaca lining uh, for added windproofing and water resistance. It's obviously not a waterproof jacket. Uh, it doesn't have a hood uh, and it's lined with fur, um, but it is water resistant. Uh, on the back, we've got waist cinches. Uh, on this oiled version, uh, they come as standard with a drawstring to adjust the fit of the waist. On the non-oiled ones, they come with the, we basically, if you buy one from us, we can install a paracord drawstring for you, uh, but they don't come with them as standard. Um, and yeah, so this oiled one is, obviously they're different colors, but this is the regular whip cord, this is olive. And then we take that and we oil it with a mix of paraffin and urethane oils uh, to give it uh, very, very uh, water resistant properties uh, and also clogs up the pores of the whip cord, which is already super dense um, and basically makes the jacket much, much warmer as well as water resistant. Yeah, sort of brings it to around about a 14 ounce as opposed to a 12 ounce. Um, and as Alex mentioned, without the stitching on the D pockets here, it gives it a little bit more of a, of a, a sleeker finish as opposed to the traditional M1 deck jacket, along with the, uh, the darker alpaca oh, lining okay. as well. So in the oiled one this year, we're going to be doing black and olive. And in the non-oiled, we're going to be doing olive, which is this one, uh, and a khaki, which is slightly lighter, um, but similar-ish color. So moving into technical, we've got uh, three technical jackets. Uh, this is our Primaloft Riders jacket. Uh, we've done a version of this every year for as long as I can remember. This one is very, very slightly different to the past, uh, most recent version. We've taken off the chest pockets. Uh, so we had zip chest pockets on in the past version. And then we've also added the top entry, really big, comfortable lined uh, pockets that we've had on a number of other technical jackets. Uh, we put them onto this. Uh, just so if you've got gloves on or if it's really cold, you can easily slot your hands in the pockets. Um, otherwise, no changes. Very washable, very warm, um, very quick to dry after you've washed it or after you've been rained on. Really, really versatile, kind of middle layer in the winter. Yeah, so always super popular. Every, everyone, everyone in the office loves it. The, and, and with the addition of this micro suede line, and it's really, really comfortable. Keeps your hands nice and warm as well. Um, so we, we're rerunning our, uh, our Primaloft uh, Street Parker. Sorry, that's my train of thought. <laughs> Primaloft Street Parker. Uh, so this is a Primaloft Gold Outer. Uh, it's got the uh, slightly heavier than before last full winter uh, Primaloft lining. Um, probably less water resistant than uh, some of the other jackets, but it's probably a step up in warmth to the, to the rider's jacket that we showed you just a second ago. Um, also probably much softer as well, the hand feel, right? Yeah, really nice, soft, uh, almost cotton. And it has a hood, which is obviously a pretty significant difference. It still is water resistant, um, but this fabric isn't made to be waterproof. Uh, if you want waterproof, the next jacket, which is the Mountain Parker, really is the, the one to go for. This one will give you kind of shower, shower resistance uh, lots of good pockets and really easy to kind of compress and pack in a rucksack or something. Whereas the Mountain Parker is really big and bulky and much harder to pack. Uh, so this is the Mountain Parker. So this is, <coughs> sorry, this is uh, Event uh, Outer, really, really heavy duty, Primaloft gold uh, lining. Uh, so this is uh, Event is a waterproof material. So this is the, the only jacket on the lineup which is actually waterproof. Uh, it's significantly warmer than anything else of the technical series. Uh, it is, as Adam corrected me earlier, warmer than the N1 deck jacket. It is, however, um, modern and technical and the fabric is surprisingly clever in the way that it kind of breathes. So if you're wearing it and you get a bit too hot, it does let out that sweat and kind of body warmth a lot better than something like an oil deck jacket. So it, in the, on the coldest of cold days, this is the warmest jacket we do. 
but on a slightly more mild day, you won't f get as overheated in this as you may do in one of the more traditional jackets. Uh, really, really, really good jacket. Um, I think underappreciated. Uh, a lot of people may look to another brand for this sort of product. Uh, this is by far the best kind of version of one of these heavy snow skiing jackets that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, really, really special piece. Uh, okay, let's get into leather. <clears throat> Uh, so first things first, we've got a sample that's not uh, with us at the moment, which is a black uh, leather uh, Type 3 vest. Um, that's chrome tanned. Everything else leather-wise we're about to show you is vegetable tanned. Um, full details of all of these products are going to be up on the Ironheart website, Ironheart forum, uh, later this afternoon. So you can check that out, including the vest. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about the jackets. So first up, um, we've got two... Um, asymmetrical, somewhat asymmetrical riders jackets. Uh, so we've got a blue and a black, um, vegetable tanned leather. They're both T-core, so they'll age very nicely over time. Do you want me to hold that? Oh. Yeah, thank you, mate. Uh, the leather is from Himeji. Uh, a lot of our leather is from Himeji, one of the smallest tanning towns in Japan. Uh, and yeah, obviously the blue is, is quite out there, um, but kind of surprisingly accessible. Uh, works really well with a lot of our stuff. Uh, okay, so now a slightly more um, kind of classic jacket, uh, similar to the IHJ 54 Brown, for those of you who, um, who remember that jacket. Um, this again is a vegetable tan brown leather. Um, it is not T-core, so it's brown all the way through uh, and has nice nickel hardware. Uh, cool, so we're going to move on to shirts. Uh, so first up, we've got three uh, colors of the same style of shirt, same fabric as well. So this is a 10 ounce organic cotton uh, chambray. Unusually for Ironheart, uh, these are sulfur dyed, not reactive dyed. So these will slowly fade over time, but they're not going to fade as quickly as your favorite pair of jeans, for example. Uh, three colors, khaki, red, and blue. Um, two ounces lighter than uh, the classic kind of IHSH 13 and 21 chambres that we do. Um, significantly different hand feel as well. Uh, these feel heavier than 10 ounces, but they, they also feel different to the, to the 12 ounce heavy chambre that we do already. Uh, really, really cool pieces. And it'd be very interesting to see how these age uh, after a couple of years. Uh, next up, we have got some mechanic shirts. <clears throat> so we've got three colors of reactive dyed 11-ounce uh, TC mechanic shirts. So these are kind of work shirt in cut, so wider in the body, slightly shorter in the length, um, no taper at the waist. Uh, and then mechanic shirts have the flap down pockets and snaps throughout. So we've got brown, uh, black, and khaki. I said that in the wrong order, sorry. So that's brown at the front, khaki and black to finish. They got a really nice sort of retro retro look to them, but with, with a really durable functional material. So you've got the, the rounded pockets and you've got the, the larger split hem as well at the bottom. You'll probably be able to see a bit better uh, on the khaki. Try the khaki one on. Please. Yep, no problem. Um, something I find interesting about this shirt is, although it is based on our work shirt fit and it, it is slightly roomier, than a Western shirt. Um, they do give, if you wear them true to size, they do give quite a flattering, slim kind of silhouette because of the fabric uh, and the snaps. Obviously, you could, you could size them up. Adam probably would be buying a size larger than this uh, if he was buying one to keep. Um, he's normally an XL in shirts. Again, these samples are large. Um, but they do look uh, kind of different to how I was expecting when I first saw the sample when you, uh, when you wear them. Yeah, quite a hefty, hefty 11 ounce feel as well. So, yeah, I don't know if I've put this one on. It's really, yeah, very nice. Add that to my list. Uh, next up, <clears throat> I actually forget the weight of this. Can you remind me? 10 ounce. So a 10 ounce uh, mock twist Western shirt. We're just going to do this in the Western. Uh, some of the shirts that we're about to move on to are going to come in both work and Western. Everything that we've shown you up to this point is just coming in the uh, the style that we're showing. Uh, so this is just coming in Western. Uh, it's black. It's an extremely interesting fabric in person. And I hope that you can see that on a close up um, on your screens. Uh, it's a hard one to capture 
um, in still photography. So hopefully you can see it. If not, then definitely the sort of shirt you want to check out in your local retailer uh, to get a, a real kind of feel for the fabric. Um, very unique. The first time we've done something like this, uh, as long as I can remember, if not ever. Yeah, you've got the, it's a really, you've got really tightly woven black and, and gray yarns in there, um, which from, from afar, it looks like a pretty sort of plain black shirt, but close up, it's got a really unique, um, a unique look and hand feel as well. It's almost like moleskin like with, with how tight the weave is. But yeah, as Alex said, in person, this is an incredible shirt. Hopefully you can, you can catch that. Um, moving on to another uh, new and also quite unique uh, fabric and shirt. Uh, so this one I actually think is the first one where we're doing two different styles. So this is a Sawtooth Western, obviously, uh, as you can see. We're also going to do a work shirt in this fabric. <clears throat> this is a, a double cloth Western shirt. So the face, so basically it's two fabrics which are woven together into one. Um, sorry, that's not quite right. So it's two Basically, the warp and the weft are woven in together. They're different, but they create one fabric when they're woven together. The warp is indigo cotton, 100% Supima indigo cotton, and the weft is a uh, synthetic mix. Can you open that up to show the inside? Yeah. Synthetic mix, which looks similar to blanket lining. They're very cleverly woven into one single fabric, so there's no, diff there's no gap between face and reverse. Creates one fabric, which ends up being a, a mix. So although the warp yarns are 100% cotton, the shirt is not technically 100% cotton. Uh, I don't recall the exact split, um, but that will be listed on the on the Arnhart website, um, uh, so you can see. So it's not as warm as a as a lined shirt, um, although it is quite warm, um, but it has that aesthetic. Uh, very very interesting. First time I've seen anything like it. Uh, very excited to see how these. Age. The indigo obviously will fade nicely over time. Yeah, really excited for this. Um, 14 ounce, but it's it's got a lot of heft to it. It's really, really warm. Um, and yeah, can't wait to see how, how this is going to age over time. Um, okay, guys, we're going to move on to uh, another new fabric. Uh, let's do the workshop first. Yep. So this is an 8 ounce um, indigo dyed, uh, seven, 7 times indigo dyed hickory herringbone. Uh, so hopefully you can see, if Adam moves a bit closer to the camera, you can see uh, the herringbone in the, kind of, in the white stripe of the hickory, which is a really cool detail. Um, do you want to do a, a weft shot as well? Yeah. The weft of this fabric is, is really, really amazing. Um, quite like the idea of doing a shirt reverse out, so you can see that on the outside, but um, Haraki said it wouldn't work from an um, aesthetic point of view because of the, the way that the indigo dipping works and how that would kind of fade uh, the wrong way out, basically. Um, so we're going to do that in work shirt, which Adam just showed you. <coughs> we're also going to do a sawtooth western. Um, so sawtooth, just the double jagged pockets uh, on the western flaps rather than the single snap. So like what Alex was saying in terms of the seven times indigo dyed, jeans are normally um, indigo dyed ten times. So hence why that the, we're expecting the indigo to, to fade a lot, you know, really quickly. Um, it's also woven on a dobby loom, so you've got that really uh, great character and an even hand as well. Um, okay, so next up we've got some UHFs. Um, you're probably bored of my voice, so I'm going to let Adam uh, talk to you about, about the uh, UHFs that we're doing this year. So first up, we have uh, not actually a UHF. So we are um, getting to a point where the amount of Aspero cotton we can access is we're getting to the, to the upper limit of that. So we're trying to diversify, try, try new ideas, new fabrics to, um, you know, so we can still have a, have a large offering of, of these type of shirts. So the first time we've done anything like this is, uh, this is actually what we're calling a slubby heavy flannel. So it's a, uh, the, the outer texture is is obviously slubby, it's herringbone, it's got a very um, much more of a crisp outer hand feel. The, the inside is still double brushed, so you've still got that really warm, smooth inside as well. Um, so this is the, the only slubby heavy flannel in the collection in this grey colourway. Um, I forgot to mention we will be doing all of these in Work and Western as usual. Yeah, really excited about this. Uh, if you give a nice little close-up, <clears throat> hopefully you guys can pick up the kind of slubby nature 
of the fabric. They're, it's much hairier than a normal flannel shirt. Uh, you do get little nippy, uh, sorry, neppy bits. Um, and obviously the herringbone adds a really nice texture to it. Um, really, really cool shirt. Probably got the best feedback from uh, all the retailers uh, that we've shown it to so far. So we're excited yeah. to see how these do. Our UHFs are always warm and, and rugged, but this, the, the exterior of this makes it feel a little bit, a little bit more rugged and a little bit more hard wearing as well. Thank you. Next up, we have this uh, blue tartan check, again available in Western and work shirts. Same 12 ounce Aspera cotton that, that most of you will be familiar with, with the single brushed on the outside, double brushed on the inside. Next up is a red crazy check. This is the work shirt variant. Again, we'll be doing this in Western. So you've got reds, you've got sort of a, an off white and blues and greens in there, which hopefully you can see. A nice brown and yellow colorway. We're calling this the brown check. Um, again, all, the all these and the rest of the ones I'm showing you are 12 ounces of Spiro cotton. Yes, uh, AJ. The question was, are these the same weight as the slubby heavy flannel? Yes, they're all a 12 ounce. Um, and lastly, we have two uh, ombre check flannels. So we've got this green colorway and we're also doing it in red uh, where you've got blues throughout as well. Love these ombre colorways. They got a lot of, a lot of love during the collections as well. All of these will be online with full, full product photos. So don't worry if you miss them right now. You can watch this video again. You can also go onto ironheart.co.uk or the Ironheart forum and see lots of photos. This is the slubby heavy flannel in red and gray and black and white. Uh, this is the blue, green, yellow and white uh, Czech UHF. Red, green, blue and cream crazy check. Brown and yellow UPS check. That's not the official name. Uh, two ombre checks. We've got a green, a brown, and blue, and a red, blue, and black ombre check. Uh, no jeans in the collection. No, no trousers in the collection. As I've said a couple of times now, we've got big issues with production in certain uh, areas. Uh, so obviously, uh, for any brand, keeping new things coming is really important. But also for a brand that is famous. Uh, for making its jeans, uh, doing anything that would harm the, the production of our core jeans would be really stupid. So we are just paring back what we do. We've got a streamlined collection of new things and we are focusing on getting our core production up to the level it needs to be to meet the demand that's out there. Uh, we're not gonna be looking to add crazy new denims uh, or anything in the short term. Um, hopefully we can get these problems fixed uh, soon enough and then we'll be back to doing new denims and stuff as part of the collections. Uh, we are, we've got new fabrics coming all the time, uh, but just specifically this collection is going to be tops only and lots of jeans that you've not been able to get hold of uh, recently will be hitting the website throughout for winter, but they're not technically part of this collection. And then last thing guys, we've got a couple of uh, sweatshirts. So let's do this one first. So this is a um, stand up collar, uh, kind of hybrid between a shirt and a, a hoodless hoodie, if that makes sense. Uh, snap down pockets. Side pockets like you'd get on a hoodie. Uh, the collar could be stood up or also rolled down. Uh, really cool, um, interesting, new style for us. Um, so excited about this one. Uh, that's plain, obviously, uh, front and back. And then last thing in the collection, we've got a, a big printed hoodie. Uh, so Ironheart chest print and a large motorcycle centric uh, back print. Uh, we're just gonna be offering that in the zip hoodie uh, and only in black, not in a pull on. So those, those of you who, know, who have tried our 14 ounce uh, Luke Will sweats before, they are just really, really heavy, really comfortable, really warm. Every time I, I pick mine up, I think I've left a, a t-shirt in there. Um, and the one that Alex was showing, I, I'm super, super excited about this. I just think it's that perfect hybrid between smart and casual. You can, you know, you can dress it, dress it up with the collar down um, and done up, or it can also be, be casual with, you know, open and 
more of a obviously a, a hoodie sweatshirt kind of thing. Shoot. Okay, thank you guys very much. Like I said, uh, any more questions, find us on the forum uh, or on, on email, live chat, whatever. Uh, Instagram, any method that you choose, we will answer your questions about any of this or anything else. Thank you very much for watching um, and we'll see you probably in six months for the next one. Thank you so much, guys.